นี่เจตจำอุปธิสายในบรรดาสายโพดเมียนกัมพูชีวัชยุซีอัมันขยมบาดกุ้งสำไรเนสัยเมืองตุ้มนึ่งสหการีระบอกยืนขยมดับเตี้ยส้มจูนกัมพูชีสายเนื้อปรดไงปุ๊ดตีดับปีไทยกะกะดาครูสักรายตีปอนดับปีได้เต้าหนึ่งไงบุญรู้ไทยสาบชั่งพระกาปุตสักรายตีปอนปรามรอยหกสับวยเราในเรื่องบรรยากาศที่ตีเมตรัยปนมีสำคัญสำคัญเราเปิดเปล่าลมไงปนนี้รวมีอัมปีรัฐาภิบาลเป็นจีอเป็นโชคการนอมไฟจากบรเตบรรดาปีรอเคยพอปะปอคลังกรมอังกาสังคมซีเวอร์นังกระทรวงฮักเตยบรรดาบรรดาครูบังโกจุมิงประช่างอำเภอปกระนุยอังกาคลอมเมลสุดมนุษย์ทางกัมพูชีกลัวแต่หลบเจ้าบ่มร้ามเลยเนี่ยคลอมเมลกาบชนาวรวมจีมวยนังดำนังสำคัญสำคัญมวยจุมนวนเตี้ยได้นังจุมเรียบจุนลงเนี่ยเนื้อสับจีบรรดาบรรดาในประเพณีทางปุณิดายังช้ำนเมียนสันตระธาใบทำไมจุดเพื่อบรรจับในแบบติดตามในเวทมันจีเนไอกติกมาจำนวนใบรูปบานล้างคลายการปิดไงติดตามใบแขกกระดาไงสายในขนมอัลมาฮัสเนบัตขมายในสมดในดัมบอนรัตเทนีวอชิงตันดีซีสหรัฐอเมริกประเทศนับบัตสำคัญนุกประดับอัมปิธาตารัฐบาลนังอภิบาลกิจละอ๋อเมียนสระสำคัญยังไม่คลาขนมการจุลรวมช่วยสังกรุประเทศจีนมาในประเทศตามปิจิอัลบานตอนเปเวลิโนจำลายปุสดาที่ยังชมนังสายจูนเป็นบันติดเตี้ยบันต่อปีปอดมินประจำทั้งไงโซมันเจยลงเนี่ยเนียงตามดานสดับการมันติดสายในวัตถุสีอ่ำอันในปรกประลมทั้งไงปุ่นนี้ติดตามหลงดับได้เมตรัยจะกระจับดาวในการวิธีปอดมีนประจำไงเราบอกวิชุสิมันเนอเปิดโปรเลมไทยปุ่นนี้ดิ้งคลำซาวมาสผมชุนคลำซาปุสดาเตอร์ตามหลุมดับโดยต่อเตยกระทรวงรายนังคำมาโปลบานเป็นที่เอาเป็นชุบการนอมคลายแต่แขกก่อก้องเชิงตะกราประเทศขณะมันเตยปะประช่างซาอ้อยรถมันเตยกระทรวงรายบอมพลื้อจมพัวกาบันต่ออาชีวกรรมคลายในขนมแขกนี้ก้าวไปแขกมุนในขนมสิกระไดปรกาจอดไงที่ดับไฮกากระดาชนำปีปอนอัปรัมปีกระทรวงบานเป็นชี้เตยอัญญาโทเปียป้อนในขนมแขกก่อก้องทุกการอนุญาตอเมริกาผู้อาชีวกรรมนอมไซส์สำนองครุประเภทหนึ่งไซส์ผู้จริงเตอร์บอร์เตเนี่ยนอมปีกระทรวงรายหนึ่งทำมาปุ๊บโลกเมงสัตระบานบันไทม์เลิกข้อมสาลิขธาการเช่นวิธีนาการลึกนี้คือบรรจุชิสทาโปบรรจุปีกระทรวงป้าบรรดาอสรการปีชั่งปีปอนดับประมุ้ยดับใบศึกษาพอปะปอลลูกบรรดาท้าบรรจุปีมนตรีจุ่มเนียงรถเคยท้าการทวีอาชีพกรรมบุ้มสัตว์ขนาดท่อมน้อมแต่การประเทศฝ่ายปะปอลปริธานสังคมทมเทงเป๊กเตอร์ทวีอากระทรวงเชิงสมอัยบรรจุการนอมสัตว์แต่การประเทศชิสทาโปแต่ไม่ดองมีกำไรกับกองทัพในเศรษฐกิจนั้นตามกองทัพในสถาบันกู้ในสถาบันที่ของประเทศกูต่อประเทศกูนั้นทุ่มเทมหนึ่งน้องสาวในเขาเงินตราต่อเอาไปเงินชิบกรรมตรงสัดตรงเส้นในการเป็นดาวสินเป็นอ่อนนั้นยังให้บางทีไอ้เรื่องรับผิดชอบในการศึกษานั้นกระทรวงบางเชิงสิ่งใดสิ่งใดจิตทับตัวมุ้ยเป็นชุกแต่อันเนี้ยพอเงินตราตรงชิบกรรมตรงเส้นทมภาษาชิบกรรมตรงเส้นทมนั้นที่ประเทศจีนก็ได้เจอขนมโกได้ดำไปนอนเจ็ด9ปีคายมิถุนาชนำปีปอนดอกปรำปีประเทศกรมดำนางเรียกขณะปะสังคุชีลกสนใช้ตามระยะประเทศรัสเซียบานอาลีขัดมุ้ยสนาอ่อยรถมันไตรกระทรวงรายหนึ่งทำมาปนลูกสีแสมบำเพ็ญจมพัวกาบรรโตอาชีวกรรมสัตว์หนึ่งบางฮักไอกระซาเปียป้อนดำใบปุ่งเรื่องกันเนี่ยในเพียบจุมเรียกมันเตอร์สองไซท่าอายังมีอำเภอปุ่งระลุ้ยปลอมแตงชีวิ่งกาพ่นฉลอมนิยุโปรเตบาดสมป้อนกันเนี่ยในเพียบสังคมหลุดซ้อนใจปลอมตัวจมปูกาสำรักระบารัฐาพิบาลและเป็นเชี่ยวเป็นชมการนอมสัตว์แต่กลายปฏิปันใต้โลกฮะมันมีจุมเนื้อท่ารัฐาพิบาลอันหัวอันมีประสิทธิภาพนุเตะได้โลกท่าประสิทธิบาทกาลอจมวยหนึ่งสหกุมในขนมตัวตัวยกปอดมิ้นหนึ่งกายเจ้าอันหัวตอนตื่นยมเยอะการสุดใจสมรัยว่ากระทรวงสายทำเปิดเปิดแค่ดอกกระดาวดีมาสามวันนี้ดีสิเออสุดใจสมรัยต้องขายมวยทำไปอ่ะยังสร้างแต่มันรองพอได้ยานาก็น้อยยิงเราแต่มันรำปีขาดวงไข่ชนะกระเป๋าใต้อะไรต่างๆวงไข่เข้าทำแล้วทีนี้มาสิ่งเยอะเยอะในการในการสลายทอปเป็นการเรียกการบอกเยอะแล้วนั่งบานตอนเตะเรียกดอกสลายเรียกเรียกดีกาปีจงชนะปีปอนดับประมุ่ยกระทรวงรายหนึ่งทำมาปูบ
នឹងកាត់បន្ថយអំពើពុករលួយនៅតាមពុជានាយកប្រតិបត្តិអង្គការតម្លាភាពកម្ពុជាលោកព្រៀបកលបានថ្លែងប្រាប់អ្នកស
ហាក់ដូចជាមានបំណងដកចេញនៅបញ្ហាប្រឈមនានាចំពោះការគ្រប់គ្រងនយោបាយរបស់ខ្លួនហើយជាក់ស្ដែងមិនចង់ឲ្
North Road, Virginia. He is the president of the Khmer Association of Hampton Road, Virginia, and also known as the KAHRW. Although he is a trained engineer, I read his synopsis. He spent a lot of time doing some study, traveling back to 1950-something, uh, trying to compare the United States administration and, and, and also the, the effects it has on Cambodia. So I'm going to give him up to 15 minutes to do his presentation. Show us what you have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, on the right hand, some to make sure of John I guess there's no way we can meet the first last time speech. There is no way. But I guess I'm waiting for my speaker to start my presentation. Someone knows to It's a very, very interesting and it's a true story and it's good news for us, Cambodians. I just want ask Mr. Uh, Water, don't use my time yet on this. You make them after the meeting, you make them tell them or tell them, you know. I just happened to pick up USA Weekend, USA Today Weekend. And I guess I didn't read it until this morning. What it says in here is very, very important for Cambodia. What happened was, 60 some years ago, the United States dropped about 20 atomic bombs in the Pacific Ocean. 20, uh, 60 years ago. But you know what? There's a research team in, uh, in California. They were doing research about how to maintain longevity. How can people live longer? So what they found out was after 60 years of atomic bombing in the, in the, in the Pacific Ocean, none of the coral got affected by the nuclear radiation. Now that, that, that's, I don't know if you, you know what I'm talking about, but it's very, very crucial. My point is, they supply your tongue. Supply, supply the bone tie, mean guy, you know, your bar, don't you, I think, nuclear, you know, mean guy, you pertain cancer, okay? And they supply smart tongue, you know, mean cancer, some sign, how often can I'm? Right now, there's something's happening that we just found out, this newspaper just put out, the call. So maybe, what I'm trying to say is, the paradox is, maybe this group here, we are immune to get Cambodia off the cancer thing, okay? Anyway, that, that's a sidetrack, but this is the true story, right? Oh man, I, I, need, I need another thing before I start my presentation, but that, but that's okay. I'm going to make him talk to my mom with it, and I don't want to pull it on I got something to tell you. I can tell the whole thing, everybody. Not all clear, you tell your mouth, but it's more and more you tell me naturalization. You told you the plan, right? You know how, how hard it is to do that in the United States? You have to wait at least five years, have to pay some money, and not only that, you have to study the test, take the test, to become naturalized into a different kid, right? But you know what? OKS come up with the best idea, and you know who came up with that idea? It's the Queen of the Poland. He came up with the best idea to get a different nationality. It's going to be less than five minutes. doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you don't even know how to have English. So what he designed was a magic restroom. Nobody's laughing. By the way, guys, if I'm telling a joke, we need to laugh. Mark my turn, okay? No, 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 but, but there's more. There's more. There's more. The, the magic part of it is that the young Khmer young, Aziz young, Joe number two, Jake Mao young, a Khmer that I have, right? Now the young Khmer, the Aziz young, Joe, I thought I think you Jake Mao, the point number one, you change nationality. Let, let me say that in English for some folks here. Mr. Richard Porter from OKS has designed a magic toilet, a restroom. What happened is, if you're an Asian, Cambodian, say, if you go in there for a number two, you come out, you're still Asian. But if you go in there, you do the number one, you come out, you change your nationality. But anyway, um, this is kind of a mind teaser thing. I want you guys to think about it. If you got an answer, fine. But I'm not going to give you the punchline until after my presentation. How's that? Give you time to think. Now on to the real deal. This presentation is based on 98% common sense and 2% knowledge. Okay, like, he's just reading my mind here. It says here, I have a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. The future depends on what we do in the present. Meaning that this of my year, the future of so my year depends on what we do in the present. Okay. And here, here's my uh, credential, my contact information. The topic for my speech today is crisis in Cambodia. Here's a, 
Uh, table of contents, uh, if anything, if I go through the table of contents, my time is up, will be fine. I have in there my autobiography, my KHRV, is my command association, the admission activities, what happened when diplomacy failed, I want to talk about that. I did some research on Cambodian history versus U.S. presidents, and I present some existential crisis in Cambodia. Then I provide resolutions to existential crisis in Cambodia. I also propose a timeline to save Cambodia. And why my proposed solutions, resolutions work for Cambodia. And I also offer the next step for OKS. Also my input on how to work with other Khmer associations. And also the role of OKS group after this summit. After this week, what we've been doing? I'm going to try that. And also I have a short summit survey and we have Q&A, all right? But good news, folks, I'm not going to have time to go through my autobiography or my mission or what we do in my, uh, my association. Well, you will have that in our OKS booklet that we're passing out. So if you're interested, just go through that. If not, but simply what I want to stress is the role of OKS here is simply to make Cambodia great again and save, you know, stay great for centuries. Alright, a little story to start out, so I want to make a point. How the father punishes his son. In Cambodia, a father caught his son stealing. So he whipped his son with his belt, but the son did not learn the lesson. Next, the father caught his son bullying other kids. So he said to his son, I'm fighting you, I'll kill you if you are ever attack other kids. But the son did not learn the lesson again. And next, he found out that the son had murdered somebody. And he turned to his son and said, I cannot help you. So he turned his son to, to, the, to, to the justice, to the police. And so the son got put in jail for 20 years. But the moral of the story is, when you steal, you attack, or you kill, you will be punished. And nine times out of time, ten, every time good force or power is used against you. Right, that, that's a given, okay? Now, the next thing is, I want to talk about when diplomacy fails. I want to stress that when diplomacy fails, we have to use power. And the p power is used by using diplomacy tools. A lot of people are mistaking power with hate. Power is not hate. Power is truth. Power can kill you though, okay? So now, what are these diplomacy tools that I'm talking about? Look, look at these bad boys. These are submarines. Here is an aircraft carrier, and it says underneath, as you can see, 90,000 tons of diplomacy. But I'll tell you what, if diplomacy fails, it's going to be 90,000 tons of power. And folks, these bad boys, they are 100% what? Okay, so moving on, just to give you a few examples of how dictators die from power. We all probably remember yours truly, Adolf Hitler, is by suicide, Muammar Gaddafi by stabbing, and obviously Mr. Bin Laden here is by gunshot wound. I don't know if you've seen this, the CNN just showed this two days ago. It was terrific, it was horrible when they stopped uh, Gaddafi. This is something a bit very, very interesting. I did some research about the Cambodian history timeline versus the U.S. president from 1953 to now, 2016-17. And again, for the time saying, I'm not going to do, go through this, and you can look at the booklet for all of this. But what I'm trying to say is, every time, this is what I, I observe, when the United States is, uh, has a Republican president, we have something good for Cambodia. Something happened good for Cambodia. But if it's a democratic, uh, is a, a Democrat president, something's not good for Cambodia. Just, just my observation. Okay. So I think to me it's pretty cool. But anyway, again, for time's sake, you, we all know what happened in Sokmai. What are the crises? What are the problems? So I have here about 10, 15 of them. And I'm not going to go through each of them for the sake of time. But as we all know this, you know, unfair, no justice, look, they look so okay. These are the crazy stuff that we're talking about. So here's the uh, the next one is the fourth power, and I got 15 of them. But again, you go through my uh, booklet to, to to read all this. I don't have time to do this. But here's something I might want to spend a minute or so. I have proposed a timeline to save Cambodia. There's about five steps in this timeline. 
And step one is our force here. Okay, I should mobilize the force. Step two, do the same thing with all the international five forces. Step three, do it in Cambodia. Step four, get NATO's approval to proceed with the force power. And step five is we're going to carry a strategic execution with code name Sava. Sava, I don't mean it's a lot of trouble, okay? But anyway, I will explain it later. The speaking of power, I would like to get your attention on this, this table here, all the military. Folks, these are the power I'm talking about. I strongly suggest if anything during lunch or whatnot, get to know these gentlemen. These are the very, very powerful people. If you don't know their story, you're missing the whole boat from my presentation. Especially Mr. Sen Tai Hien. You need to ask him why he is the my hero for Cambodian for the United States. The United States of America owes him a favor. He's a very, very important man. But anyway, check with him. Is my time is up? All right. All right, thank you. Then. We will have this uh, PowerPoint available to the, to the organizer. And if, if people are interested to get a copy of this PowerPoint, I got you to us uh, again with uh, Mr. Sanja, your email, so you can send these emails to you. What you see, I'm on. I'm on for a YouTube comment. The purpose of this panel, I know that uh, yesterday we spent a lot of, you know, like one side talking and stuff like that, and we had not enough, enough time for questions and answers. I want to make this panel much more interactive so that we can take back a, a real, actual plan of action you know, to help solve uh, Cambodia. My next panel, and I cannot wait to introduce him, like I said earlier that uh, Mr. Honorable, Honorable Hong Net, he was elected by his peer in Massachusetts. Uh, I want him to share with us, now that he's representing Khmer, how important it is that Khmer involved in the political process get Khmer elected, and how can we translate from being American, Cambodian American in the office, advancing the Cambodian American uh, interest, and how that translates into the advancement of the interest of Cambodian in Cambodia. And you can answer my question by add on to your previous speech, if it's all possible. Thank you, Mr. Shen, for your kind words. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the Bong Dr. Dr. Paul for your invitation, and uh, Mr. Jung, yep, for your invitation, and uh, Professor uh, Ben Ning. Like I, I always told um, my former governor, Dr. Patrick, that it's so hard to speak up for him because he's such a, a great speaker. But today, I'm so sorry. I have to be honest with you. The world passes no much to this amazing speaker and uh, amazing professor. And I really mean it. I'm very honored to be here today and honored to share this table with all wonderful the pool, Wong, uh, the pool, Jen, and uh, it's so wonderful to see everyone this morning. And my families are here, and uh, my family and friends are here, and also all military personnel from Lynn are here as well. And I help them to uh, start up on the group. And um, thank you for being here again. Good morning, everyone. So on behalf of my family and the great city of Lynn, I am humble and please allow me to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to be here today. And um, this is amazing and um, this is the first time for me to participate with these beautiful, energetic people here. But, you know, my presence today here is very unlikely, as you know. I'm a very shy man, and I'll uh, get a very few words, but I will try my best, okay? People always told me that you know, I should not get involved in politics because I'm too shy, I'm too quiet, and too naive. They say politics only for those who like to talk and even you know how to manipulate. But I see it differently now because I was quiet. I'm still quiet, actually, but I try because I've been in the office for, for uh, six years now. I should be able to, <laughs> to get something out of it. And um, yeah, I'm honored to, um, to be elected as the first Cambodian, as the first Asian American in the city of Lynn and the bomb that the world knew uh, six years ago, yes. And six years ago, Little Bong became an orbit. <laughs> so, what's the step, right? Little Bong said, and um, Little Bong introduced me, Little Bong um, encouraged me, Little Bong um, support me, and Little Bong endorsed me. So, I, I really appreciate that, Little Bong, very much. Um, 
I was born with a, with a poor family in Cambodia, just like many of us here. And uh, I've been through the struggle. I've been through the Khmer Rouge, like millions of other people. And um, my mother died when she was, when um, my youngest brother was only two weeks old, because she died from overworking. Yeah, they forced her to work. I was only seven years old myself by then. And um, my uh, second brother also died a few weeks later. It was hard for me after he passed because I was the one who was assigned to find food for the family. He died when I was in the, the rice field uh, looking for crabs and uh, collecting snails to feed the family. So I didn't even have a chance to for the last time because they took him away after he passed, just like they did to my mother. And you know, um, very sadly, my mother always, when she was alive, always had a dream that I was great because I was always scared, quiet, and afraid to argue with anyone. So they always put me around and always cry and scare everybody. But she dreamed that I was brave. But all I imagine myself that ride a bicycle to go to school just like other children because in my village only a few people who were able to own bicycles to go to school and I had that dream but I never had the dream. I never had the chance to go to school. And uh, of course when um, the canoes collapsed in 1975, I was separated to the other side of the country living with other children, making fertilizers, digging canoes and building dams just like many other people did. When the canoe collapsed, so, uh, I escaped to Thailand, lived in a refugee camp and not just one so many camps. I lived at the children's center called the Orphan Center because I was orphan. I lived before two and a half years. I arrived in the United States in October 29, 1982, living in South Hadley, Western Massachusetts with my foster family. I attended Catholic High School and um, later went to the University of Massachusetts. And after college, I was asked to go back to Cambodia to uh, work for a non-governmental organization, or NGO, and later joined the United Nations Development Program, helping the newly Cambodian on budgets, education, and tourism. I uh, also found an international language center taught um, over 800 local stu students in Cambodia. During the coup d'etat of 1997, as you know, I came back to America and lived in Lowe back then and um, was teaching immigration and U.S. citizenship to the newcomers who live in, uh, in Lowe, Lowe for the CMAA, my name, for part time. Then um, I met my wife, Tara, who is here, who is here us, and we got married, actually we met at a French graduation party in Boston, and we got married and we moved to London in 1998, we moved on a Valentine's Day, and um, we bought our first home in that city, and we called the city our home, everything, and we have two wonderful children who are here, Anna and William, William taking the show right now, so thank you, Vivian, you're very supportive. Uh, 2011, I decided to run for politics, because of the impression from first friends and family, and got elected, not because of me, because so many people wanted a uh, diverse representation in our city. And I got elected because of the bill, because of my family, because of all the wonderful people who are behind me. And uh, I, I don't want myself as well. But as you know, running for politics or running for any public office is not easy. It's very hard, very hard. And can be very, very intimidation sometimes. But in the end, it is rewarding, as you all know. I got intimidated so many times. People just booted me and said, you go home, you not belong here. This is real. And my son got burned and missing all the time. I cried, and I cried. I said, why the hell am I doing this, you know? I'm not deserved to be like this. I just want to go to work, get up in the morning, go to work, and come back home to my family. Why should I deal with all this, you know? I was so angry with myself. I was angry with people who asked me to run. But, you know, because of this intimidation, because of this harassment, because people were close to go up and they saw me approach their home. I work hard and I said to myself, I must work smart, like the doctor uh, said. I must work smart. It may be smart and let people around me have to find people work smarter to overcome this obstacle. And we did it. Then so after I got elected, I saw this need that not our city have the equal opportunity for everyone there. Because there's still a small group still control the city. I don't want to say the word white, but unfortunately there. The history, 156 years of history of land, only the same group control the city. And when the got elected, was shot, everybody. Was shot. No one ever thought of happening. The man who, uh, nobody 
moon only took us uh, for four months to uh, to uh, but yeah so I created the third human rights commission in our city because I saw there's a need for that. But people and especially this, the elected officials and um, the official in, in the city was kinda of a little bit nervous because they did not get used to the diverse representation and they were not ready for changes in the city government. Therefore I had to go to the people. So I had to go to the people to sell my ideas. And because the demand from the public was so great and some elected officials who wanted to change so the city council had no other option. They were forced they were forced to pass the amendment and the mayor, who was so against me, had to sign it in July. Now we have 12 capable, effective, and amazing commissioners who serve our city proudly, and um, everyone had the chance to participate in the political process. And I see that so many minorities are being built up as well. And um, for that, you know, I know that um, my, both my parents have died away now, but they are watching me now with great pride with all of you as I stand here. And um, I also want to stress this. I owe a great debt to people who've been here, who struggled to come here before me and led the way for me to follow. And um, we are here, united together today, and to celebrate the greatest of our communities. Because like Dr. said, we have to work together. We cannot be right. That's why we are here. And I'm so proud to be here with you because of that. And um, as you know, because this country is such a great country, we have the Constitution who guarantees us the right to live and um, equal right to everyone, the pursuit of happiness, and uh, and not a, not afraid when we hold a meeting like us, not afraid of a girl who's coming knock the door and see what we're doing. So that's why we, we are so free. And we want, we want this, the same thing in our country. And I want to call they want to, uh, to remind our people in Cambodia that they have the choice. They have the choice. Cambodian Constitution guarantees everyone to live to free and fair and uh, have the chance to live their lives just like us here. Let them know that they have the choice to choose the leaders next year who can represent them and who understand the ideal of Cambodia just like we do. Because we are here doesn't mean you ignore them. Every day I got the news, I'm sad. But that's not much we can do, but say that is wrong. Yes, we can do. We can do better by working hard, by spread the words to people over there. And, um, you know, people are very smart in Cambodia. Not very, very smart. Because the technology and the gardens like this today, they can hear us. And the, the technology today can be the great button to eradicate the ignorance and promote democracy and human rights. So that's that's the that's power we have, like Twitter, like, Twitter, like Facebook, and we kind of don't have it. And we are people from France, from the United States. We have the choice to, uh, to educate them, to empower them, to do what they, they are fair to do. And um, I know my time is up. Okay, I would like to make a final. Today, as I stand here, I'm proud to stand here, and knowing that this summit will bring a possible change. A change for good, because we believe in that. And I want to thank you again for, from the bottom of my heart for the invitation, and may the Lord be there, and God bless you. Thank you. I believe that you have a citation from the city of Lem for us, so uh, we would like to make sure that you had the opportunity to present it to uh, the committee. I'd like to advise the chair of the committee, maybe Kia Gucci, can't accept citation the way that they have organized this for what we on the camera. On behalf of uh, my colleagues at the city council and the mayor and everybody in the, in the city government, we are honored, honored to present this citation to the committee of overseas my summit. The office of the Lim City Council offer this sincere congratulations to Overseas Khmer Summit Committee in recognition of your efforts in committing to building a stronger overseas Khmer community and lasting independence and peace in Cambodia. The Lim City Council acknowledge your accomplishments, dedication of the community and overall excellence. So as an inspiration to all to follow. On this grateful proud city, we are offered this citation to you on the 8th day of July 2017. Congratulations. But just 
Two seconds. On behalf of the organizing committee of the OKS, we deeply grateful for the city of Lin and presented to us in recognizing our great effort here. And we appreciate our brother, Honorable Hong Net. Thank you very much. The first and only Cambodian American city councilor at large. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So we have one final speaker, please. Last but not least, last but not least, we're going to spend the, the next 15 minutes for the uh, final presentation, and then we will spend maybe the last up to 20, 30 minutes for question and answer. All right. We have one to start with Mr. Boite. Mr. Te, you were one of the two among the close to a million Cambodian American in the United States that was appointed by the President of the United States. You were the only one appointed by the, the Democratic President of the Ukraine to head one of the largest U.S. agencies, the Department of Education. And later on, you was uh, recruited and headed one of the largest and most powerful unions in the United States, which is the National Education Association. So if anybody in this room knows anything about lobbying, you. Because of that title, it allows you an opportunity to rub shoulder with big in Washington, D.C., you have involved with a lot of lobbyist groups in D.C., so we want, to sh- want you to take this moment to share with us, what is, uh, how, first of all, what is lobby, and, um, and how can we use the American, Kabul American power here to, to lobby for the, our interest and also the interest of Cambodians in Cambodia. And also, it can include your particular speech as well. Uh, good morning, my fellow Americans. You are American to me. I want to make sure that we all know that. Thank you. I was contemplating about what to say for the next 15 minutes yesterday, for today, to make it more valuable time for you all. And I came up with something that I want to say. I thought it was good. But then I listened to Dr. Kafar to speak, and I said, you know what? He means nothing what I'm going to say, because he said everything that we need to hear. And I feel that, and I believe, and I agree with everything that he said. It's very rare that I, I do that, that I agree with it, but I do. Let me, in the next 10 minutes or so, let me just offer some micro, not macro, you don't know, professor, offer the macro, the framework. So I'm going to offer a little micro idea about helping Cambodian Americans to do their part, to do our part to help Cambodia, their army do that. I want to do it in a couple of ways. One, I want to begin with a couple of quotes and citations of course, and a little personal stuff. Then I'm going to share with you a little bit of a sort of semi-personal, but also I hope that you can take something out of it. And then the third piece, which is the thing that you want me to do, and I'm going to offer you idea on how to be involved in our political environment here. Our political environment here in the U.S. that will be beneficial to our client and client in Cambodia. I know that my fellow panelists make an assertion that every time when we elected a Republican president, Cambodia is good. I like to disagree, but that's going to be the next. But I'm going but, but to share with you this one quote, and fortunately from a Republican president too, but I'm not going to name name here. So a former U.S. president once said to his president just there, something like this. There are a lot of people out there who hate us because of our political beliefs. Those people will never win. But the minute we start hitting them back, we lose. So keep that in mind. Unfortunately, this president also responsible for, in part, the genocide of Cambodia. My assertion. And they know we have about 300,000 Cambodian Americans in the U.S. This is from census 2010. You know, there might be more that have been reported, but officially it's around 300,000 Cambodian Americans in the United States. I was once asked by one of the client leaders, well, not personally asked, that, you know, if you have 1,000 Cambodian Americans who love Cambodia, and then make a donation to my political party, a thousand dollars each, then we would have collected, what, a hundred thousand dollars? But we don't have uh, uh, one thousand Cambodians who love Cambodia. You know, and I say to my table, I said, you know what, I think, I think he get that mixed up. I can bet that among 300,000 Cambodian Americans who live in the United States, I can bet every one of them, maybe not quite, maybe 209,000 of them love Cambodia. They just don't agree with 
the thing the other leaders do, and that's why they don't join, they don't donate money to. Simple as that. Okay. So let me also say this: the political hatred, vengeance, and extreme ideology killed more than two million lives in Cambodia, 1975-79. I know. I love my sister. I love my brother. I love my uncle families. I love my cousin, and I love a lot. And I'm one of the lucky ones to survive to be here to tell you that story. I'm not reading from any place anywhere. So for someone come here or go over there and tell me that I should make this as political that the you know when Cambodia where I lived my family was free in 1979 and I should be grateful to those who free us at that time. What kind of Cambodian is there? The Cambodian are we grateful to people who actually help us? And that is because those people who come to help us they have a political agenda. What is Tell me what country on earth that go out and do something for other country without any motive of political agenda or their national interest. Then I can, uh, you know, submit myself to you. Because the reason I get hard on it is because it is personal. It is personal, right? So I'm sorry. But I also want to say to you too that I think we have a lot of leaders in this room. We work so hard. I know you work so hard because I get email from you asking me, asking others to join the plan to come to the meeting. I know you all work hard. I don't doubt you work hard. You all work so hard. But you know what? Leadership is no longer about the privilege, but it is about responsibility and accountability. What have you done, results? What have we done? What have I done to further the advancement of Cambodian interest in Cambodia? If that are for and you know, yesterday I was going to show a DVD, but the, somehow the DVD didn't work. Uh, there's one quote from the DVD is that leadership is looking at your weaknesses first, not other. And before looking at other, look at far. We also talked about that today. That look at our weakness because that's the thing we can do. You know, but also I. Have a son and a daughter. My daughter just graduated from University of Virginia. The major in guess what? In politics, media studies, and English. But she doesn't really like what's going on in Washington D.C. right now. But that she's over 18, so she can hear the life, right? But I have my son who just graduated from high school. First in his high school, a class of 750 students. He is the first one, and he gave a speech at his graduation. The first thing he did was to acknowledge his root, Cambodian. And I said, well, you want to say Cambodian American? I say, no, I want to say Cambodian. And he asked, I'm not his mom. And I think that kid can go a long way and very far. I also happy to report to you too that he is going to be attending Princeton University this fall. And he, and he told me that if any Cambodian parent or student that want to talk to him about idea or way or tips to apply for Ivy League, he can provide the tips and idea from his perspective. It might not be everything, okay? So contact me, contact him. Also, he's a, he's a good speaker, so he has many speeches. I want to be the inspector of the facilitator in the time, so let me do this. So, you know, every time when we have a meeting, that we want to do something, to help something, someone, I always ask the questions, and then you know that, what can we do, you know, with what we have, or with what we don't have, right? So, now I'm going to share with you what we all can do. First, vote. Vote. You all can go and vote with somebody in here. I mean, the, uh, from city council or with somebody out when they don't serve the best interest of your family or your community. You must vote. Now, we talk a lot about being having a fair and good election in our homeland, right? I'm not sure that we have an agreement on what it looks like. For a starter, let me suggest this. This thing you can do. Volunteer in your home precinct to serve as an election officer. You learn how we conduct election here from the Salon Park. She is an election officer in, in my county. Right. <laughs> And it's a good process, and it's good. And you all can go to your county website and, and fill out application and fill. Second, you know, when you vote, you vote what, based on whatever you vote, but keep in mind that, you know, what's in there for you, your family, what you want to do, what you want, you know. 
I have a story here. Can be quick. You know, and we are, uh, the people in Washington D.C. area know that I am a Democrat, but with what they don't know that I'm not a Democrat. I have a liberal. Is there a difference? Okay. So, and then we have, you know, our, our good friend, Cambodian friend, you know, every so often when I see him, you know, I'm not gonna name it here. The other company and say, hey, Bob, I'm sorry, I voted for Republican. I might respond to him. I always say, no, don't be sorry to me. What well, the question is this? Did they know that you vote for them? Check on him. Did they give you anything or you get anything out of it? Did you get your own block of Cambodia vote for them? Never it is. It doesn't matter, Republican or Democrat. Ask that question, okay? Let's see here. And also, in addition to voting, okay, appointment to the political office. I know that, that uh, when Donald Trump got elected, what, six months ago? It seems like so long ago, right? And I, as a Cambodian American, as a liberal, I send a message out, and for the purpose of helping Cambodia to be part of for whatever political party, that, hey, you know, if anybody interested in being part of this political administration, Trump administration, let me know, because I stand up through Clinton administration, so I can provide you some ideas and process as a group about doing that, right? So, and that is my last point. Thank you very much. Now, if you find this uh, plenary, inspiring, emotional, interesting, and provoking, it's all by design. It's designed to provoke this your thought, designed to make you think differently, and designed to get you emotional so that you can, you can get more involved. ແລະលោកអ្នកនាងមិនដាក់ស្ដាប់ទីមេត្រីអំបាញ់មិញលោកអ្នកនាងទៅតែបានស្ដាប់ផ្នែកបញ្ចប់នៃកិច្ចវិ